Chairman, and I'll try to be quick, uh, both out of respect for other members, but also have a presiding officership, uh, officership that begins in a few minutes. Um, but uh, I can't help but uh, uh, observe that there's a lot of conversation about what this means from the PJ leadership's perspective, what this could potentially mean from a PIF perspective in Saudi Arabia itself. I don't hear a lot of conversation about the players because the players' performance that drives the game. It's the players' performance that drives the fan base. It's the players' performance <laughs> that drives the revenues. So I want to take a moment to focus on the players and the need to do right by them should this agreement actually be concluded. Now, as we all know, prior to the framework that was announced, the PGA Tours uh, officials were highly critical of LIV. And those who chose to join LIV in fact, I understand that the PGA Tour suspended at least 24 players who participated in live events and declared them ineligible to participate in PGA Tour tournaments. Of course, PGA officials then turned around and did exactly the same thing they criticized some players for, leaving those players who chose to remain loyal to the PGA and forego the significant financial benefits of joining live, understandably, wondering what was the point of remaining loyal to the PGA. So, Mr. Dunn, can you tell me how will players who remain loyal to the PGA be made whole? Uh, will they be eligible for some form of damages? And it's not just the foregone income that was a real pain, but their reputations even uh, taken a hit. Can you explain to me how players are going to be uh, uh, made good should this agreement go through? Uh, it's really, but, but I, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'll, I'll answer, but Ron is really doing the negotiation, but uh, thank you for your question, Senator. Nothing will happen without the players' fully support. Uh, we have five player representatives on the tour policy board. I, I can't imagine the circumstance where I won't be voting with the majority of them. So, uh, and I have to emphasize, we negotiated the settlement of the lawsuit in complete secrecy because of the fear that a lot of people make a lot of money in these lawsuits, especially the other side's lawyers. So to the degree that got out, we, we would never have gotten that to fruition. All that we have done, and it's a two-stage negotiation, a little bit of what Senator Johnson was talking about. First, the, the first part is lawsuit settles, tour has to be in charge, and we'll agree to talk. Now we're talking with complete transparency. So the players are going to have to get something that they appreciate for staying on the tour. I hear you. Time is limited. As we turn over sorry. to Mr. Price for your remarks, let me also add in the dimension of for the new players that were now eligible to compete in the PGA because there was a handful that left to live. What happens to them after uh, this merger, if it goes through? Senator, we, we've, got, we, we've got two task forces in place now, and we're working with our player directors because we're a membership organization. That's who we represent. And the first task force is evaluating ways in which we can recognize the players who remain loyal to the PGA Tour. That's very important to us. We will not move forward with a definitive agreement unless we get that right and our players support that. For players who left the tour to play for LIV, they were suspended. If they come back, they're not going to be playing for LIV. They'll be playing for a PGA Tour controlled uh, sports league or, or golf league. And they will have to go through our existing rules and regulations process to gain re-entry right. to well, the just, just membership. No, that's one of the PGA areas tour. that we'll be watching. Yeah. Uh, the second, Mr. Chair, instead of uh, asking an additional question, I'll just uh, state a concern for the record, and we'll follow up in uh, you know f future uh, conversations here. But during the 2023 season, Live Golf pulled a bait and switch from what I understand, on the, its television broadcast technicians who are represented by the International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees when they switched to a non-union production company 
and making the technicians behind Live Golf's production some of the few in major sports who do not receive any health and retirement benefits while providing coverage. So while I, my first question was about the players specifically, please know I'm interested in the uh, uh, treatment and fairness of all employees that make golf revenues, including but not limited to significant broadcast revenues possible, not just as players, but uh, in, in the broadcast, the production, uh, et cetera. So yet another area that we'll be following up on. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Senator Padilla. Uh, Senator Paul. I've been a vocal critic of the Saudis for years and led the effort to block billions in arms sales.